Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. We are in the middle of a variable speed upgrade for my Geo 602 lathe. Uh, last time we got the motor and the VFD set up on the bench, everything wired, got the VFD programmed, and everything is running beautifully. But there's one problem that you couldn't see in the video, and that's EMI, electromagnetic interference. Now in many home shops, this might not be a problem, but for me it is. The, I have a computer running my CNC mill, and the EMI can interfere with that. But more importantly, I shoot video here in my shop, obviously, and the EMI being uh, emitted by the variable frequency drive is causing problems with the video gear. Let's go over to the bench, take a look at the problem, and then we'll work through how to solve it. This is the same setup we had last time. This is the Tico Westinghouse VFD hooked up to a one horsepower three phase motor. And this is just where we left it last time, wired up, programmed, and ready to run. Now I've pulled a couple of extra things into the shot today. I've got an oscilloscope that I have wired up to some transformer uh, current sensing coils, and we will look at those in a minute. But I've also brought in my production monitor. Now, I normally shoot with three cameras here in the shop just so I can have a variety of shots and so I can work around my big hands and my big head that keep getting in front of the camera. And uh, I stream the video from all three of those cameras to this monitor so I can keep an eye on what's happening as I'm working and I can get an idea of what's being captured by the cameras and I can, again, move my big hands and my big head out of the way. Now, watch what happens to the monitor when I turn on the VFD. I've just got this set around 20 hertz. You can see that the monitor goes completely blank. Now, depending exactly where the monitor is in the shop and which circuit it's plugged into, sometimes it just gets jittery and I lose horizontal sync, but sometimes, like right here, it just shuts off completely. Now, what's going on here? What's happening is the VFD is generating electrical noise. And the reason this is happening is because the VFD has some big transistors in it, IGBTs, insulated gate bipolar transistors, and they are switching the power to the motor coils on and off at 16,000 times per second. This is the 16 kilohertz pulse width modulation. And they do this to be able to control the amount of power going to each coil. Now, the IGBTs have to switch very, very rapidly from off to on and on to off because any time that they spend in the kind of partially conducting mode, they're dissipating heat. And so to limit the heat that's being dissipated from the VFD, you have to switch them very rapidly. But when you switch rapidly like that, you generate very sharp edges that have a lot of high frequency noise content and that high frequency noise escapes from the VFD into uh, nearby electronics. There's basically two ways this happens. First is radiated noise, and that's primarily what's happening here on the motor lead. Because the motor lead doesn't go anywhere except to the motor, it can't really carry conducted noise to any other attached equipment, because there isn't any attached equipment. But it does set up noise currents in the lead that then radiate electromagnetic waves out into space, and those can interfere with nearby equipment. But probably the more important source of noise here is conducted noise, and that's noise currents that travel back up the line cord into the power supply, into, in this case, a plug strip that I have over here on the left, and um, anything that's plugged into it, including this monitor, uh, the computer on the CNC machine, and any other equipment that I have here in the shop or in the house. Before we start trying to fix the problem, let's see if we can uh, measure it, see if I can illustrate what's going on here. So what I've done is both on the motor lead and on the line cord, I have formed a current transformer. Now this is just a coil of wire. In this case, it's just a test lead that's wrapped around the line cord eight times. Same over here with the motor lead. And why eight times? Because that's the length of the test lead wire. Over here on the motor lead, that came out perfectly wrapping it eight times, and I wrapped it the same number of times on the line cord. Now, the, the current flowing through the line cord here produces an electromagnetic field. And this coil of wire wrapped around it forms a transformer that induces a current in that coil from the magnetic field that's in this cable. Now, because the hot and neutral lines are both inside the cable, 
we're only measuring the net magnetic field and the net current. The uh, power that's actually going to the motor, the 60 hertz AC power, is traveling in one direction on the hot line and at that same moment traveling in the other direction on the neutral line, and that cancels out. So we shouldn't see that current in the current transformer. We should only see the noise current or the common mode current that's being transmitted back up this cable. Now, we can't measure a current directly. We need to measure a voltage with the oscilloscope. So I have the coil connected to a resistor. This is a 1K resistor. And in this configuration, it's commonly referred to as a burden resistor. And 1K is probably way too high. We're gonna see more than just current. We're also gonna see some electrostatic coupling in addition to the electromagnetic coupling, but that's okay. Again, I'm not really using the right equipment. I should be using a spectrum analyzer, and all I have is a low-end oscilloscope. I've probably got, you know, too few turns on the coil. I've probably got too large of a burden resistor, but we're gonna roll with it because I'm just trying to illustrate and get some relative measurements as we try to do something about the noise. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. So I've got my oscilloscope connected across the resistor so that we can measure the voltage across the resistor caused by the current that's induced in this makeshift transformer coil. And I've got exactly the same thing over here on the, uh, on the motor lead. Okay, now looking over here at the oscilloscope, you can see I've got two traces on the screen. This is for the two probes. The yellow trace is the line cord uh, transformer, and the blue trace is the motor lead transformer. And this is set to 200 millivolts per division on both of these, and you can see that, you know, aside from just the sampling noise that causes these little flickers every now and then, there's basically nothing going on here. Now, the Power is on to the VFD. You can see the lights are flashing. It is drawing some small amount of current, but you don't see anything reflected here, and the reason is because those currents are canceling out and the coil isn't picking anything up. Now let's take a look at what happens when I turn on the motor. Now you can see all kinds of noise and junk being picked up by the, uh, the yellow trace, again, is on the, on the power lead, the line cord and the blue is on the motor lead. And if I kind of try to zero in on just sort of one of these pulses, and I can mess with my trigger so that I can catch kind of only the highest ones, I've got the scope measuring the peak to peak voltage. And so on the, you know, being noise, it's all over the place. But on the line cord, I'm seeing peak voltages as high as, oh, say about 1.2 volts. And on the motor lead, I'm seeing it up to uh, as high as 860. So let's write that down. And on the motor, Okay, so this is, this is our starting point. We're getting these spikes. And again, what does 1.2 volts mean? Uh, it doesn't really mean anything because this thing is completely uncalibrated. I just wrapped some wire around this, grabbed a resistor out of my junk drawer, hooked it up, and I'm getting 1.2 volts across this configuration. What's the actual voltage or the actual current noise in the wire? What's the magnitude of that? Um, I'm not even gonna try to figure that out. If you know, put it down in the comments. Um, but we're just gonna use this as a starting point so as we start to try to do something about this, we can see the effect that we're having. I think our biggest problem here is probably the conducted noise as it usually is traveling back up the line and interfering with the monitor. So let's start by trying to deal with that. Um, the easiest way to deal with conducted noise is just to use a filter. And this is a filter that I bought. I got this one on Amazon. There'll be a link down below if you're interested. Um, and this is a, a common line noise filter. So it's got inputs for line and neutral. I just scribbled on here. They're, they're actually, um, it's balanced, so it doesn't matter which side you put the line and neutral on, but I went ahead and labeled them how I'm gonna hook it up just so that I don't get confused later. Now, what's actually in this box are a couple of common mode transformers or common mode chokes that the line and the neutral both go through. And what's happening here is when you create, when you have an inductor, it has higher impedance 
for higher frequencies. So what's going on is we want to pass the 60 hertz uh, power through this essentially unimpeded, but the higher frequency noise content we'd like to block. And so the way this works is it runs through these two uh, series inductors and the inductors look like a higher impedance, which is exactly what it sounds like, like a higher resistance or, or uh, it weakens the strength, weakens the current of that noise energy that's going through. And then it's hard to see on here, I'll, I'll pop up a circuit diagram on the screen. There are then capacitors both between the line and the neutral and between the line and neutral to ground. And a capacitor looks like a low impedance to high frequencies. And so what happens is in layman's terms, as the energy, uh, as the power goes through the coils, the coils weaken the high frequencies and then the capacitors drain that high frequency energy off to the ground. And this one's actually two stage. You can get these with a single coil. This has got two coils in series. So you just hook this up, got to have a ground connected and hook the line in neutral to one side and your load, which in this case is the VFD to the other side. So let me unplug the VFD, hook this up and let's see what that does to the noise being conducted back up the line. Now I gotta wait for the capacitors in here to drain because I don't want a nasty surprise. And they're dead. Okay, that's the, uh, the line neutral and ground to the filter and the line and the neutral, sorry, I didn't have a white wire, um, connected up to the input of the VFD. Last thing is I have to ground the VFD. Now, when I ultimately put this in a box, these wires are the right length, so I went ahead and made them up. Uh, the ground wire is gonna have to go off to a terminal in the box somewhere. So for now, I'm just gonna use a test lead. Now, this is gonna be probably higher, um, higher impedance than I would really like, so it'll probably reduce the effectiveness, but I think it's still gonna be fine. Okay, we double check the connections here. Okay, I think we're good. Let me plug this back in. And there was no loud bang and blue smoke, so I think we're good. So I guess let's just try this again. Let me flip it on and let's watch the monitor. And lo and behold, nothing happens. Let's take a look at the oscilloscope and you can see we're not triggering anymore and that's because the peaks are not high enough to hit where I had the trigger set. Let me bring that down. And let's take a look at the values. It looks like the peak to peak voltage, I'm watching this on the line cord and I'm seeing, I think about 760 is the highest number I've seen. And over here on the, um, on the motor lead, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing maybe 900, 950. So you can see we've cut almost in half the conducted noise that's going back up the line to the, to the, the monitor. Now this monitor is fairly sensitive to a lot of things. I've had problems in the shop where I touch my cameras and it goes off for a second, but nothing like the just complete loss of, of picture that I was getting from the VFD. So what's going on with these numbers? It looks like the line filter in terms of conducted noise back up the line, again, even dealing with the low efficiency of this ground test lead I have, we've just about cut the amplitude of those noise currents in half. Now on the motor side, we haven't really done much. In fact, it may have gone up a little bit. Um, this could just be noise or random variation, or it could be because of the capacitors in the input filter, we've actually stiffened up the power supply. That's 
not really a technical term. And we're actually getting sharper current spikes to the motor. So let's take a look at what we can do on this side. Now again, just this filter has actually solved my problem with the monitor. The monitor stays on now, I'm good with that. But let's take a look at what we can do on the motor lead as well. Okay, for the motor lead, there are, um, there are filters you can buy, three phase. Uh, filters, line reactors, all kinds of very expensive gear that you can you can buy to to uh, filter noise. But again, we're primarily not concerned with conducted noise on this line. We're primarily concerned with radiated noise, and that radiated energy is going to be at relatively high frequencies, perhaps above 35 megahertz, which is where the FCC classifies uh, EMI. And uh, in order to deal with that, all we really have to do is round off the square edges of the waveforms, reducing the high frequency energy. And there's a couple of ways to do that, but the easiest way is with uh, ferrites. This is a ferrite. Um, this is just a composite material made with powdered iron and some binders and then covered in a ceramic coating. And you, these are sold primarily, these are transformer ferrites. They're sold for actually winding wire around them to make small transformers. But if you put these around the conductors on the lead, they will actually absorb or reflect high frequency energy that's going down the cable and have the result of squaring off and taking the, the high frequency edges and hence the radiated noise off of the signal that's going into the cable. Now, I have a whole bunch of these and we're gonna go ahead and put them on this motor lead. We're gonna put some of them on around all of the wires together and some of them on the individual wires. We're not gonna bother trying to wrap them. We're just gonna run them straight through. Let me turn off the power here. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna wait for the capacitors to discharge because I don't like unpleasant surprises. Okay, I got all three of these out. How many of these am I gonna put on? Well, I bought a package of 10 for about $8, so let me just throw them all on here. Are they all necessary? Oh, probably not. But they're cheap and regardless of whether there's a real issue here or not, this is good practice and they will help control radiated energy. So I put two coils around all three wires, two coils on each wire, and because I had a 10 pack, I got two left, so I'll just go ahead and throw those around all three. This is all gonna be sitting in a Hammond box. It won't matter at all, and I can use, you know, use zip ties to try to organize these and make them look nice. But there's my little ungodly pile of ferrites on there. Let me hook the wires back up. Okay, and plug it back in. Okay, we've got everything back up and running. Um, again, with the ferrites on here, let's power up the motor and see if we can see any difference on the oscilloscope. And in fact, as you can see, we're not even triggering. Wow, this has worked a lot better than I expected. Let me bring this all the way down and let's take a look at what we've got. So if we take a look at the highest peaks, the peak to peak on the line cord is down, I think I saw 576 there, call that. And on the motor, we're down to, it was 544, 568, I think, 576. Let's call that 576. So you can see with those ferrites, we have uh, cut at least a third, maybe a little more than a third of the high frequency noise out of the motor lead. And that has actually further than dropped the noise that's being transmitted back through the filter up the line cord. And the reason it's, it's affected the line is because we've taken the sharp edges off of this 
So that that power that w that had those sharp transitions and those sharp square edges going to the motor was being drawn from the source, you know, through a bunch of filtering that's in the VFD, but it was being drawn from the source. So by slowing down those edges, we've slowed down the rise in the current draw back to the line. And so all in all, we've cut about more than half of the noise out of the line cord, and we've cut at least a third of the radiated of the noise that we're measuring in the motor lead, and we've probably cut quite a bit more than that uh, from the radiated noise that I don't really have the, the right equipment to measure. That's all for today. Uh, I had to walk through the process of troubleshooting this noise problem and coming up with a solution, and I thought it might be useful to some other people, so I decided to show it here on the channel. Uh, the next thing we need to do is stuff all of the electronics into a metal Hammond enclosure and then stuff it all into the lathe and we will work on that next time. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.